While I normally do this at the end of a video, I'm gonna just, just a little case study you want to try it at the beginning of this video. If you like videos like this, be sure to subscribe. Give it a big thumbs up if you do indeed end up liking it. How about this? Leave it a thumbs up, and then if you don't like it at the end of the video, take the thumbs up away. I just want to see how many more subscribers per views this video will get, how many more likes per view this video will get compared to my other videos. Case study, if you will. Oh, and I'll also say, I never plugged this, but follow me on Twitter, link in the description. <laughs> That's my YouTuber mentality that I have. Now, in this video, we're actually gonna be talking about the software developer mentality. First of which, you gotta drink coffee. Okay, a lot of people call this uh, software developer soft skill, soft skills. I call it mentality because that's just kind of how I allow it to lock into my brain. Basically, it, it's your people skills, social skills. While you can be the best coder in the world, what if you have to work with a dev team, which 99% of y'all will, unless you just do freelancing and work by yourself. How are you gonna communicate with your dev team? How are you gonna do code reviews? How are you gonna do payer programming? How are you gonna do any of that? Speaking of which, how are you even gonna get a job? How are you gonna convince the interviewer of a job to hire you if you don't have any any people skills? It'll probably prove fairly difficult. And it's kind of wild. When I first wanted to make a video about, or in all honesty, I didn't really want to make a video about this, but when I first thought of, you know, a lot of people talk about soft skills, software developer soft skills, I'm like, yeah, okay, just talk to people like you talk to a normal human being, but I understand not a lot of people uh, have people skills. I also realize that not a lot of people understand the importance of having people skills. That's why a lot of us become coders because we don't really care to talk with anyone. We wanna just sit right here, bury our faces and just code all day. However, like I said, most of y'all will probably end up getting a job. And with that job, you're gonna be working not only with people, HR, project managers, but your dev team on a daily basis. You're gonna be doing code reviews, you're gonna be doing pair programming, and if you can't communicate properly, nothing's gonna get done as well as it should. But I'm kind of uh, putting the cart before the horse here, so let me just hop into a few of these software developer soft skills, the software development mentality that you ought to have when it comes to the people side of things, the social side of things, as opposed to the coding side of things. And I keep looking at my monitor as if I actually am going to hop on into it with y'all, but I'm not. This is kind of a talking video, which makes a lot of sense considering the, the topic of this video. What I'm about to talk about isn't in any particular order, but we are gonna start off talking about accountability. Because here's the thing, I'm sure whether you're in school, whether you have a job, whether you do both, I'm sure y'all said to your teacher, your boss, what what email are you talking about? I must, I must have missed that email, or I, I responded to that email. Something must have messed up there. All while knowing full well that you didn't, you saw that email and damn well know you didn't respond to it. Don't make excuses for the things you forgot or neglected to do. You just gotta take ownership of it and move forward. Here's the thing, if you just sweep it under a rug as if it was an accident, you will never learn. You'll say to yourself, oh, you know, I'll, I'll do better next time. Next time I'm gonna make sure I get that email. Next year I'm gonna make sure that code builds. Next time I'm gonna do this. Next time I'm gonna do that. But you never do because you never face any repercussions for your mistakes. You just you just say, oh, it was the computer's fault. Oh, it was the email client. Oh, it was this, oh, it was that. You just, everything else's fault, not your own. At least that's how you want everyone else to perceive it. You don't want anyone to think that you did something wrong. If you have to face the music for every mistake you make, I guarantee you'll make less of them. That is because every time you go to your boss, your boss says, oh, did you get over that email? Instead of just trying to sweep it under the rug, pretend that, oh, I didn't see the email. Oh, I sent something, but it, it, something must have messed up here. And you say, I saw that email. I just, I didn't get to it. I got distracted, this and that. If you had to say that to your peer or your boss every single week, don't you think you would get tired of feeling bad about not building your code or missing that email or doing whatever wrong that you did? But here's the thing, because it is more difficult to take accountability for your actions, the less mistakes you'll make. It'll make you do right in the first place. You won't pretend to forget that email next time because you would have actually done the email. You would have responded to the email. You won't forget that you built, didn't build the code because you would have actually built the code because you're tired of saying to your boss or your peers, I'm sorry I didn't do this, I should do it better next time. It'll allow you to learn from your mistakes. If you don't 
ever take accountability, then you'll never learn. Now let's talk empathy. I feel like the term empathy is a bit overused. It's actually even misunderstood. Everyone says, oh, you need to make sure you have empathy. Well, what does that really mean? And do these people actually practice what they preach? Well, let me put it to you this way. Have you ever noticed how different you act when you're with different groups of people? How do you act when you're around your parents? How do you act when you're around your friends? How do you act when you're around your teachers, your colleagues, your coworkers? Just think about that for a second. You're thinking, well, I'm, I'm always myself around everybody. Well, so am I, but do you think that I'm gonna be the same when I'm with my friends and when I'm with my parents? Do you think the farce night you see on camera is the same one that you would see out doing whatever with my friends? Well, it's all me. It's all different versions of me. It's not me being fake. It's not me changing my values to make somebody else happy. It's just a different version of me. It's me reading the room and adjusting. I did it before I was even aware of it. And by that, I mean I did it unintentionally. Let's circle back to the whole camera thing. Like I said, do you think the same forest night that you see on camera is the same that would be out and about with friends? No, I act ever so slightly different on camera, a different version of myself. And whether you realize it or not, you do too. If even just the slightest, you do it. That's where empathy comes in because with most people, you don't know them. You need to read them and adjust if you care to show empathy. This doesn't mean you need to coddle everyone to make them feel good. This is understanding your peers need and adjusting. Some people need tough love. Other people need just some encouragement. Like you got this. And when doing this, it's not what you say, it is how you say it hundred percent. How about this for an example? If you're going to ask somebody for help on a coding problem, would you rather them respond? Do you not know what you're doing? Or would you rather them respond, have you ever done this before? I'd rather take the non-condescending second choice of, have you ever done this before? All of this comes into play in every aspect of your job, whether you do pair programming or code review, or you're doing requirements gathering with your tech lead, the project manager, the client, or if you're just simply helping out another programmer on your team. Speaking of which, when you're in a meeting, because as we know, a lot of our job is in a meeting, make sure you listen to what people have to say and then talk. Don't interrupt your colleagues, but maybe more importantly, because people tend to leave this out, don't let your colleagues interrupt you. Because here's the thing, a lot of people, they wanna be real nice. Oh, you know, you go ahead and talk, I'll listen. I'll give my two cents every here and there. If you have a point or if you have a, a, a something that you really think should be done the way that you believe, you need to make sure you speak up. You need to make sure you voice your opinion. Make sure you talk with conviction and don't get interrupted. When you're communicating your point, make sure you are heard out, just as when other people are communicating their point, make sure you hear them out. That is my understanding of empathy. Okay, we just ended up talking about empathy, why that was important, a little bit of my take on it. Now let's talk a little bit more about open-mindedness. Just let me ask you a simple question. Where do you think phones and computers would be today without the open-minded individual that was Steve Jobs? Or what about electric vehicles or even space exploration without Elon Musk? Innovation does not happen for people who think we're at our limit, for those who do not have an open mind. Those two individuals thought the possible of the impossible. While everyone else was content with how things were, they knew that there was gonna be more. They were innovative, open-minded. Okay, we're talking on a grand scale here with those two examples, but it still applies. How are you gonna make near enough progress when you always think your ideas are the best? You go into a meeting, you're talking about, oh, we gotta do X, Y, and Z just like this, but you have a project manager or a senior dev or maybe the client or maybe even a junior dev recommending ABC instead of doing this for X, Y, Z. And what if they're right? What if you maybe didn't see the whole picture. Maybe you didn't see it exactly how they saw it. And while you think your idea is the best, when in fact theirs is actually the best for the client, for the software that you're building, whatever it may be, without being open-minded to other people's opinions, you're never gonna grow. Your software's not gonna be as good as it could be. Your client's not gonna be as happy as they should be. However, just as we said earlier when talking about empathy, just as you don't interrupt people, you wanna make sure that people don't interrupt you. Just as you have to hear out everybody else's opinions, you also need to really voice it if your opinion you still believe is the best. Here's the thing, you wanna go into a meeting like this, a requirements meeting, 
whatever it may be, with a completely open mind, completely unbiased. Just think of it as, as four people going over four different ideas. It doesn't matter who they come from. Well, one is from you, one is from the junior dev, one is from the senior dev, one is from the client, one is from the project manager, and I understand I think that's five, but it doesn't matter who they come from. Don't even worry about, oh, I had that idea, that one, that one's the best, or he had that idea, he's real smart, that one's the best. No. You want to look at all these as if they're just ideas on a piece of paper, requirements on a piece of paper, and you want to make sure you find the optimal one for whatever your goal is. You need to find the best solution that is listed for the problem at hand. Otherwise, if you're closed-minded, you're not going to be finding the best problem. You're going to be stubborn or prideful, and you're just going to try to solve the problem with whatever you may have to throw at it. It's you and your team a list of ideas, completely unbiased, trying to find the best solution to the problem at hand, that's it. Doesn't matter who it came from, find the best solution, keep an open mind. And you didn't think I was gonna make this video without listing this one, problem solving. Have you ever been in an interview where they ask how many coffee shops are there in the United States? A question that you would never know the answer to? That's because they don't care about how many coffee shops are in the United States. They care about how you go about solving a problem that they know you don't know the answer to. They're evaluating your problem solving skills. And while when I explained this whole entire video about soft skills and mentality, I was referring to people skills, when it comes to the mentality, problem solving is a big part of your mentality. It's, it's how you approach a problem and well, solve it. If you just go in there and say, well, I don't know, maybe there's 100,000, 200,000, something like that. Well, you didn't really try to solve a problem. You tried to guess. This is what they're actually looking for. They're actually looking for you to go in and they ask you, how many coffee shops are there in the United States? Well, you know, my town has 30,000 people. I don't know. I guess there's maybe three or four coffee shops with those 30,000 people. So if there's what, 300 some odd million people in the whole entire United States, then I would guess 30 to 40,000 coffee shops in the whole entire United States. That's what they want to see. They want to see how you go about solving the problem, not that you can solve the problem. They're just wanting to see how your brain works, how you approach a problem that they know you don't know the answer to. And that example there, that's just my way of, of showing that I'm not blowing smoke when I come to, oh, you need to solve problems. Problem solving, it's important. It's a real thing, it's a real skill. Problem solving done. Now, something I feel obligated to mention is creativity. So many people just want to color inside the lines, even as a developer, even as an engineer, use this technology, this is exactly how you should, you should use this technology, this software, this language. Here's the thing, something you need to realize is as an engineer, your job is, like I said, to solve problems, but that is to solve problems in your own way. Not like, oh, what is, how, how would that person solve this problem? That person's really smart. They, they would probably solve this problem like this. No, you need to, well, tap into your creativity, if you will, in order to go about solving the problem. Think outside the box. Try something new with your code. You think this for loop could be formatted a little bit differently? You think you could refactor a piece of code and make it better, make it more readable? Maybe you just updated Java versions and now you have a new standard. It's quite literally your job to figure out solutions to these problems that you have and implement them. I'm just here to tell you, don't be afraid to do so. My only problem is, I don't think there's a good way to teach creativity. I think it's something different entirely. You can teach someone uh, a coding language, but when it comes to creativity, I just, it's not something I can really grasp that I could actually teach, and I'm not sure anybody else could either. I'm just here to tell you that you are able to do so in the job. You're able to be creative. You're able to test out new technologies and methods to, to improve your software. It's your job. And now, last but not least, one that I struggle with all the time because I'm a very volatile worker, and that is time management. <laughs> For me, personally, time management, I'm either on point or I completely forget everything I ever learned when it comes to managing my own time. But I'd rather not talk about my struggle, so let's talk about a popular technique that people go about when coding, and that is called the Pomodoro Technique. Or I think it's pronounced like that. The Pomodoro technique is where you work for a set amount of time, let's say 50 minutes, and then you take a 10 minute break. Then you get back to work for 50 minutes, 10 minute break, so on and so forth. You get the idea. Now this technique is all fine and dandy and I would recommend you use it if you find it works well for you, but when we're talking in the context in which we are, uh, the mentality, the soft skills, you need to understand how to manage your time and the actual jobs that you do 
at your job. Like how long should you plan? How long should you code? How long should you pair program or code review or complete a repetitive task? You do it every day, you should know how long it takes. Managing your time well allows you to focus on what's most important and get tasks done more efficiently. Tasks, that's a weird word to say. Tasks, tasks, whatever. Let's take a step back. When I mention you complete a repetitive task, something I used to have to do all the time is input data into the database. What if you had to do this? You had to manually input data into the database every so often, every day. Well, you could cut out a little bit of time every day, every other day in order to manually input all of this data. Or you could cut out a little bit more time and create a little script that'll run every single day at this time, entering all of the new data based on information you get from your email. I don't know, that, that's kind of a case by case basis, but let me just put it to you this way, because I kind of got off track of time management and whatnot, it's more than likely you already have a set schedule. You're already managing your time, whether you're setting your schedule or whether somebody else is setting your schedule. Do you go to school? Well, you probably have a set time where you need to be to this class. You probably have a set time where you need to be to the next class. You probably say, oh, I need to make sure that I get lunch in between that class and that class or else I'll be starving. So you write in a little bit of block of time for you to get some food. That's that's time management. That's you setting a schedule. However, this is this is your schedule being created for you, and we're talking about skills that you need, so you should probably learn how to do it yourself. Let me just be blunt. You need to gain the skill to set a schedule for yourself. You need to be able to manage your own time, set your own schedule, and have the discipline to follow it. Not only will it help you in your personal life, since we're talking about work, software developer, it'll also increase your productivity, which that's kind of why they pay. Time management in C. That's it, that's all I have for you. I know there's a lot of other soft skills that people normally talk about, mentality, but I'm confident that I went over all of that in this video with just simple six steps. I know I said this at the beginning of the video, but if you didn't subscribe already, be sure to subscribe. If you didn't like the video already, please give it a big thumbs up because I say this in all my videos, if you watch this far in the video, this is the end. If you watch the whole entire thing, I can only assume you liked it. Plus, it'll help me with the YouTube algorithm and get my video pushed to other people. Very fascinating YouTube, kind of seeing as an end user how this software works and how their algorithms work. Very interesting. I'm usually the one making the software, not using the software. And speaking of which, whether I have a say in this or not, big changes are gonna be happening on the channel that I think y'all will really like. Can't talk about it just yet, but trust me, it's gonna be wild.